Hey everyone, today I'm working on a four bank steam well. Uh, they're saying it's slow to heat up and they say they have to shut off all six breakers. So there's two three pole breakers. They have to shut them both sets off in order for the unit to shut off. So you can see right here, I'm gonna shut off uh, 15, 17, 19. They did have the electrician out. Uh, he's not really sure what's going on. Something's back feeding, he believes. Uh, they did just have a reno. So 15, 17, 19, you can see all four lights are still on. And let's go back now and let's shut off. Uh, so 9, 11, 13, and we'll turn back on the 15, 17, 19 breaker. And all four lights are still on, so we still have power here. So it doesn't matter what combination you turn off, it's something's back feeding or something's wired incorrectly. And now we're gonna shut off both breakers. So now we have six breakers off, which is um, two three pole breakers. And look at that, it's off now. So We'll just come here in the junction box and let's see if they messed up some wiring here. So this bottom section here is um, gonna be 15, 17, 19, and then, which is feeding, or sorry, that's 9, 11, 13, which is feeding the right hand two bank. And then my right hand wiring is coming up, 15, 17, 19, which is feeding my left hand uh, two bank of steam wells. So we're going to turn on 9, 11, 13 first. And let's see if we have power here in this junction box on all six wires. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, um, NCV non-contact voltage test really quickly. <clears throat> so you can see there we have power on the one set, all three legs. And then if we come over to the right hand side, which is 15, 17, 19, it also has power. So we definitely have some issues going on here. All right, so I'm gonna turn on the, the right hand unit and you can see I'm getting amp draw on 15, 17, 19, which is the left hand unit. These units should be separate. So I'm getting five amps there and actually one element should give me six amps somewhere around there five and a half six amps so and then when I turn on my left hand unit you can see the amperage is going on so we have three elements running off that one phase off 15 17 19 and as you see as we shut them off they go down and as you see there we only had 3.2 amps on our element which is, should be almost double of that so let's fire up here on the other phase so 3.3 amps and then if I fire up my right hand unit which is 9 11 13 the amperage goes up so we definitely have something uh, strange going on here all right so right here's our left hand side and I have uh, seven wires going to the elements Okay, there's only two elements, so in theory I should only have four wires going back. So I have kind of these white colored ones, and then I have these kind of cream, brown, colorish ones. So let's go underneath and just take a peek here. And you can see there the cream colored ones. Let me try to focus here. Actually, we'll start with the white colored ones. So the four there are gonna to go to my two elements, which they're going to the elements. So from the thermostat to the elements, so that's correct. But now I have this other set of wires, which is these cream colored ones, and they're moretted, and they're jumping over from the right hand unit to the left hand unit. So that must be where our back feed is. And you can see right there, they're moretted. We'll see if we can check in here. If you look closely there on the left hand unit, we also have that cream color uh, wiring and the white one. So the white ones are for the elements. So there's some additional wiring, which is probably why we're back feeding. All right, so if we start here, here's our incoming terminal block. So this will be, you know, your 
going back to your breaker L1, L3, L2. And we'll just put our breaker box here. Okay, and then from there, we have a second terminal block, which is our left-hand unit, which is our 15, 17, 19 breakers. And if we follow them, they're coming through here. So wire 30 is here. And then we have wire 28 here. Coming to here. So that's the issue here. So they've wired this as though we only have one power source. Okay, and then the final one here is on the L3, wire 29. So this is our back feed right here. So let me just clean this up a little bit. So anytime, so let's say we call for power here. So let's, let's call them banks one through four. So uh, this here will be number four, uh, furthest to the right. If we get power on there, Okay, and let's complete the circuit. Let's get our L2 or whatever it happens to be. It's going to come through here. And it's going to be our L3. So we have a call for heat here. Okay, but if we look, this thing is actually back feeding back into here. So that's why when we turn one on, uh, we're getting back feed to the other one. wire 29 right there okay so these two are connected so what needs to happen is uh, we need to break these three morets right here so this this schematic is correct if you have one power source so they hooked up two power sources which I kind of like because now if, uh, while one and two go down I can just shut off one breaker and three and four can still go. So just say we have a short on number three in this current setup, it would take this entire unit down, okay? But if we separate them, they literally become two units. So here's unit A and there's unit B or left and right. And then if we break these wires here, they're no longer connected. And then we're gonna connect this to our breaker panel which is gonna be here. So this becomes our 15, 17, 19. And then this one here. Becomes our nine. 11 and 13 and now we've isolated both circuits they are completely separate okay so this one here only pertains to this breaker and this one here which is our well one and two only pertains to this one here so let's go break those connections and see what happens all right so i've cut those three connections i just taped them off really quickly we will moret these correctly and make everything safe but let's check our left hand unit so if we turn on well number three and well number four there's no amp draw now so they are completely separated and then now if we come to well number two see how we're getting six amps now and then if we test that one it's separate as well so they're both pulling six amps that's good both together getting around 10.5 and let's just check the other leg of power and same thing there's no back feed six amps that's good let's go test our right hand side now which is our 9 11 13 panel 5.8 amps that's good and then we turn both on we're getting 10 amps let's check on the second leg here we're getting 5.7 because it's being split up. So everything's uh, working as it should. Six amps there. So we're all good there. The, the, the circuits are separated and now we're getting uh, full amp draw from our elements, which means we're gonna be heating a lot quicker. 
So the last thing we want to do is confirm that our breakers actually shut off what they should be. So we have all four turned on there. You can tell by those little pilot lights. So let's go back over the breaker. And let's kill 15, 17, 19, which should be wells number one and two, uh, the far left bank. And as you can see, lights are, pilot lights are off. That's good. Let's check for power, make sure we have no back feed and we have nothing on NCV there, no uh, non-contact voltage. And then you can see we have power on our right hand side. So let's go ahead and flip another breaker here and confirm everything. So let's turn off 9, 11, 13 and turn back on 15, 17, 19. And let's see if the left hand side is on. So you can see by the pilot lights, left hand side is on, right hand side is off, no NCV. And on the left hand side we obviously have voltage because the lights are on, so we're all good there. Alright, last thing I want to go over is just uh, how this auto fill works. So there's a nut there, that's where the water comes out from. Alright, so as you can see there, here's the nut that we had and we have a ground. So what happens is, we're going to send a signal up on... 34 which is our ground okay and then once water hits this nut here that I was just talking about it's gonna ground it out it's gonna close the si it's gonna close this circuit on 50 it's gonna bring it back to wire 4 okay so our board will get power here on 35 and then this will be normally closed okay so we'll finish this circuit here that's normally closed until we have water hit this nut right here okay once it hits that we're gonna open up this little switch here and this will be uh, NO normally open and then let's just complete our circuit here we're coming off of here wire 19 and this is just a straight shot to our fill valve okay and that's how we complete the circuit so, so just one more time we're normally closed right here against pins one and two until water hits this nut right here and then it grounds the circuit out and then we open up the circuit and then the solenoid no longer gets power